Action! Welcome to Breaking the Cycle, episode number nine! Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you can become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry. Did you just say you're gonna be the you're gonna be a positive male role model? Yes, it felt weird, but that's what you that's what she said. A positive male I know, role model. But now she said last week she said positive female, yeah. and this week she said positive male. So now I'm confused. Positive male role model. Doesn't that look a little fuzzy? So what about where? Like, I don't know. Where are you? Oh, yeah. Are? yeah. Let me see. Okay, no, just I go. I think it's see. fine. Whatever. So, what what is this show really about? What kind of stuff do we do on this show? These are types of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves. So when they... What? Eventually, and they will be, are confronted with these life situations and are not in shock and will be, and will have an idea on how to approach it. Hold on, my pen fell real quick. I need my pen, pen fell. Stephen Crawl from Scranton, PA, on the Facebookers. What's up? Are you waving at him? Are you going to wave at him? She's waving at you. She's hitting the wave button. Hurry up. Your chair fell over. All right. So this is Breaking the Cycle, episode number nine. Oh, you just, oh, you're giving away all the secrets. Episode number nine. And we Why always. Why dropping your pen? We always. A pen. That's a odd shaped pen. Yeah, these sticky notes are horrible sticky. I mean, these pens have horrible stickiness to them. Oh, uh, yeah, he was writing on sticky notes all day yeah. Yeah. as his to-do list, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a very convincing face. So, as you know, we're, oh, we have our freak code, our core values, our family core values. We call it the freak code. So we could be in freak mode all the freak... All the freaking time. Get there's, your pen! There's just some technical difficulties on the freak show set back here, but we're just adapting and overcoming as we go. So, when it comes to the freak code, the freak mode our core values are revolved around discipline around energy attack mind body mission listen create win confidence confidence, protect protect, and mother flipping freak freak so we usually revolve around some of those or all of those or many of those and today we're talking about a very serious topic that if you're not talking to your kids about and teaching them about you are fucking wrong and it's not how to have a talk about a language around them. And listen. That's one joke. Oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. What do you got? Why is tennis such a loud sport? Because everybody raises a racket. Because a racket means loud. No, we, like we, a band. You don't have to explain well, it. By, it just makes by daddy's bad. look, I thought, he, I thought he didn't know what it meant. I don't get it. I don't get it why they're so horribly horrendous. But you do need to always explain shit to people, like, like and you all don't the time. Stop. And then we say we get it, but you don't care. You're gonna explain it, it to the end, right? Screw it. So what do you want to do? It rock with it, kid. Rock with it. Do what you gotta do. All right. So now we got that awesome joke out of the way. That was just a great joke. That was excellent. Excellent job. You're ready for another. No, one. no, we're not ready for another Please. one. No, we just did one. We get to in a second. We got to get rolling. We can't just sit here and tell jokes that people want to hear about what we're talking about. And again, if this is if this this topic that we're going to talk about, if this is something that you're not talking to your kids about because you're afraid, like we're talking about some sometimes whatever scary topics, uncomfortable topics, like we've talked oh, about man. creeps that touch kids in weird places. We talked about that a couple episodes ago. This that week was in the first episode. No, the first episode was about. The, starting the show the freak core values i think we might have talked about it a drop that wasn't like the topic we made that it's its own topic i think second third show yeah. but this week you guys know what we're talking about this week you don't even know sometimes they don't even know they just show up ready to rock this shit it doesn't even matter to them they don't need to be prepared they don't need they don't need to be prepared with anything any secret hidden pens or notes or anything or jokes real slick Did kid fart? no that was my foot down there oh Somebody fart? You know what about farting? You want to hear something about farting? It's 69% hydrogen, 40% nitrogen, and 30-something percent something. All right, now you're a fucking nuclear physicist. Really? Mm-hmm. So here's the thing about it. 
If you're the annoying person that when you smell some nasty ass fart, right? Let's say you let's say you're around five people all day, right? You with me? Yeah. This is not about farting, by the way. We're gonna get to what it's about. This is about death. We're gonna be talking about death today. Today's topic is death, just so you know, because I kept saying it, and we never got to it. So stay tuned if you want to talk about death, and we're gonna to talk to these kids about death because it is something you should talk about. I spit. Sorry, I'm a freaking spitter. So, but before we go to death, let's talk about farts. They're very similarly related. Some people fart, and and it's it smells like death. Here's the thing. Yeah, some viciousness. Match his farts to your feet, and that's like you could rob a bank with those suckers. Jesus, Al Bundy and Married Children. He robbed a bank with his socks one time because they smelled so bad. He didn't need a gun. It's a TV show, Married with Children. He robbed a bank with his socks because they smelled so bad that everyone just went away and, and, and he robbed a bank. Wow. Feet complete. Yeah. So let's go back to the... Before we get to death, let's talk about farts. This is what we talk about on Breaking the Cycle. First of all, you know no one ever taught me about farts? No one ever told me about farts. It's 69% hydrogen. All right. Uh, definitely hydrogen. no one ever told me about that because I never knew any scientists or, or astronauts carbon. or anything. But here's the thing. Let's say you're with five people all day, right? And you smell 10 horrible farts. Okay? You know exactly. No, you're with five people. Let's say we smell the first one. I don't say anything. The second one, it's horrible. I don't say anything. The third one, it's horrible. I don't say anything. The fourth one, it's horrible. And I say, oh my God, someone farted. What do you think that tells you about the first three? That it was somebody else, but the one that you farted, it... I mean, the one that you said, oh, who farted, it was actually you. No, the exact opposite, I think. What do you think? Same right, what Midge you... said. Same what Midge said. No, no. Oh. I think the opposite. Listen, so the first three, I didn't say anything. Like, oh my God, that's so smelled. Hopefully no one knows it's me. Second one, the third, fourth one. Fourth one. Oh my God, it smells. Who did that? Meaning that one wasn't me. If I'm bringing it up, I'm only bringing it up when it's not me. To, so make sure that the blame was on someone else. But what about the ones where I didn't say something? It was me. So now it just tells you, when someone mentions that all the time, oh my God, who farted? Who farted? You know that all the other ones you smelled before that was them. That's a secret. I'm telling you, that's the way it works. Now you've just been schooled on farts before we talk about death. I know, but I always smell the same exact fart. <laughs> you, you'd rate them? When and I'm near Tyson. So I that is that is not, that's you. That smells like butt, foot, and corn chips. Anyway, let's move on to death. Now we've done schooled you on the art of farts. Let's move on because that's kind of shit. Nine percent hydrogen. All right, are you just gonna keep repeating hydrogen. the same? Are you like an NPC? Carbon. Are you an NPC? The NPC? Yeah, you're an NPC, like in in Jumanji. NPC is or good guy. guy, cool guy, good guy, free guy, free guy. Oh, His name free is guy. 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 All right, so let's get into it. We're going to talk about death. We've experienced a lot of death in this house in the last couple of weeks, right? Yeah. And it's a tough thing to talk about, but you have to talk about it because do you know anyone that's not going to die? Everyone's going to die at some point. Actually, in 2045, somebody's making people immortal. Immortal? Yeah. Where'd you hear that from? His same that's science? Told me. Oh. Scientist over here, he knows that fart too. Fart science. Fart science. Fart Teach us fart science. science. Tell, it's, so in 2045, guys, if, okay. you're, if you die before 2045, you're screwed. But apparently, the fart scientist told us that after 2045, they're going to... Also, gonna... did you know how I figured this out? It, there's this like little thing up here inside your skull. It's kind of pink and it's called the brain. Did you guys know that? And you can use it to solve things. So you solve that... In 2045, people are going to become immortal in your brain. So that's just your own thought. Brilliant. Freaking brilliant. Freaking brilliant. This is just getting, this is going down. This is, this started off bad and it's just going downhill from there. From the jokes to the fart scientist to the this. Yeah. So let's get back on death. The, 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 the lovely topic of freaking death. Kids need to know about death. You know, my first grandparent died. I think I was like six or seven. My first grand my mother's father died he was in world war ii survived and, and he survived world war ii all he had was the loss of hearing in one ear from world war ii like heavy Only combat heavy combat like frontline combat infantry in germany and poland and a couple other countries of what i read about i got to research a little more remember i don't remember everything but 
survived it, and then lost both of his legs years later to freaking diabetes. That just shows you health and nutrition, how deadly it is that you could survive fucking World War II and lose your legs to diabetes. He lost both of his legs had to get cut off and then eventually died at like only 60, low 60s, not even 65. Like Wait, He had to get his legs like incapacitated? Incapacitated? Okay, the scientist needs to go to freaking English class or something. No, pre-K. Pre-K. Okay. You, I thought you Decapitated? said that was... Decapitated? Just... Decapitated is your cap. Their I head. said incapacitated. Incapacitated means you're just taken out. Like a, put asleep or put down or whatever. Oh, then capacitated. I forget there is a term for it if you're losing your limbs. I know. I forgot it. It was something... Decapitated. No, it was something with an A. Hmm. As, as, uh, I don't remember the word. Abduction? Abduction is getting kidnapped by creeps in a white van. Like that white van that just drove by right now. Anyway. I got abducted. So he survived World War II, but he died. I was like six or seven. He died from diabetes. And it just shows you. But And then, and then think about it. Think about it. Let's go. Because let's, we go all over the place. We're brain, like scatterbrains. We're like little freaking gerbils here. We just go from one thing to the next. That's where our brains are wired, exactly. right? The freak mode. That. Look at the viruses. You'll see all these like ways to motivate you to go get a shot but no ways to motivate you to stay healthy to not have to take medication to not have to take a bunch of drugs to eat to work out boost your immune system you don't see anyone pressuring you to do that but pressuring you to take a shot take drugs do you know if you go to the doctor with almost anything nowadays after one visit and i've had clients do it where they were just had some anxiety so their heart rate was up and their blood pressure up just for temporarily and the doctor automatically says Oh, we got to put you on blood pressure medication. Once you're on blood pressure medication, you're pretty much on it the rest of your life. So they want to put them on that immediately without asking any questions like, do you have stress at Wait, work? Wait, do they like get money for that? They're sure they're, I'm sure they're getting some kind of cut. The, the drug industry is the biggest industry and the biggest ripoff in the world. Like medication, those little pills. You know, you get a bottle of pills sometimes. They, you have to pay like 200 300 400 500 600 dollars to insurance companies. You only pay your little copay like five, 10 bucks or $1. Remember the time we had to get a prescription for like... The Russian's toothache or something. It was like $1.60 or something. I didn't even have it because it was like, so I had to use a credit card. But then they send that to the insurance company. The insurance company will pay the company like hundreds or thousands of dollars for this one bottle that took them like, made, they made it in like 30 cents to make these little capsules. Anyway, big scam. I don't know the details of it. I don't yeah, know that much about, about it. That and, that so, yeah. and, that, and you said that the vaccine, the person who made vaccine had the most business problems. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had all kinds of health restrictions and health lawsuits against them. And that's who the vaccines supposedly and the medications are from. But whatever. We're getting off track. But the point is, stay fucking healthy. Do your exercise. Eat healthy. Focus on your nutrition. That's what you need to think about. So my grandfather died at a young age, had to go to his wake and see there. And you go to a wake, their casket's open. They're dead and they preserve the body so it doesn't like rot for like those few days. And you go and you see the dead body of your relatives there. It's like kind of awkward. You can even touch them and they're very stiff. But it's like your last time seeing them to say goodbye to them before you go to the funeral. Wait, did you touch him? Yeah. And he's actually in a wall. He wasn't buried in the ground. He's in a wall next to that. And his wife, my grandmother, died 20 years later. So she and actually died on my birthday 20 years later after I came out of the Marines. And they're in a wall in, in Westchester somewhere in the same cemetery that Babe Ruth is in. The famous baseball player. They're in the same cemetery as Babe Ruth in Westchester. Like near the Bronx. he was fought in World War II? No, he just happened to be in the same cemetery. I don't know. It's where he was from, I guess. Somewhere, it's like near the Bronx. I forget somewhere. It's in Westchester. Wait, when did Babe Ruth die? I don't know. He was playing baseball in like the 1920s. I remember so. he had, oh. You still have a Babe Ruth card. Not a real one. Those are not real. If that was real, it'd be worth millions of dollars. Really? Since there's there's old, baseball cards that are worth millions of dollars. Millions. The older it is. A single card. Yeah, if it's old and in good condition and like a rare one, like not a lot of them exist. There's a base. The most expensive card is like. Now I think like two, two and a half, three million dollars for one baseball card. That's like three houses, like three good can houses. It, I could get, or like it could a, be one good house. I could get, <laughs> I could get like. Five like, houses. see how he's thinking. I like how he's thinking. Saying that's three houses. Now, if you're a small-minded person, you'd be like, wow, three or four million dollars, you could buy like ten or twelve houses. With that thinking of like a, 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 a another house. He's thinking three, four million dollars. You could buy maybe three good, good, pretty good quality houses with thinking about a million dollar home. I like the way you're thinking. I like nice. it. Nice. Thinking big. Think bigger. Go home, sucker. Well, Dad, I could buy like five horses. No, it's go like a and no. like five really? horses. Jesus, those horses are almost as much as a house. There are some race horses are freaking hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably millions of dollars. Those like race horses. I like those, those carriage horses. 
I want carriage horse. You want that? You want the giant carriage horses that are like eight feet tall? Those carriage horses are massive. They don't run very fast. They're just strong. And I guess I don't know. One I don't know much about horses. One kid called Plow. You're gone. I don't know much about See? horses. It can protect me. All you have to do is just go like this to like right here. Or you then... can get a gun. That works too. Yeah. Mm. No, I want a horse. You, you could just I mean, to protect you, you can still get the horse, but. All right, back on to death. So I had to, so my first experience with death was probably that. I had a dog in like the second grade. We had a dog named Major before the boxer and before Tyson dog. We had a boxer before that. Major? There was a black lab that we had named Major when I was a young, young kid. And you know what happened to it? My father didn't like the dog very much. So he took it to work one day. He just decided to take it to work for some reason. And he said, on the way home from work, the windows were down because it was hot. And the dog jumped out of the car and ran away. Did he throw it out? Probably just let it loose somewhere, he said, in the Bronx. And I swear we're going to visit my grandmother in Yonkers. So we go through the Bronx to get there. We go near the Bronx. And we swear we saw the dog. We're like, that looks like the dog. Let's go back. It was like a few blocks down. It might not have been or not. And my father was like, no, no, that's not him. And he drove off because he wanted to make sure we didn't find it, I guess. But anyway, we thought that dog died. But then my grandfather died. All my grandparents died until my last grandmother when I was like 23. So between six or seven to 23, between six or seven and like 12, three of them died. Three of my grandparents died. And then the last one like lasted long past all the other ones till I was out of the Marines and 23 years old. But you have to, death is part of life. Like everyone's so afraid of death, right? Like people are so afraid of death. What if death is good? fucking awesome? Like we don't know what happens. Maybe it's like just a yeah. big ass party. I'll in heaven you could do whatever you want how do you know how do you know that see no one knows but maybe maybe you can have all the yeah. cupcakes and freaking string cheese you want and i won't even get diabetes <laughs> see i like the way you're thinking too i don't know why i said string cheese that's just what came out and cupcakes I, and string cheese i actually love string cheese but imagine whatever you think of it comes right in front of you if you really want it maybe that's what happened well, how about in real life happens. do that in real life Think about it strong enough, it's going to motivate you to work towards it and make it happen. Doesn't mean it's going to happen automatically. You're going to have to bust your ass and work towards it, but that could happen in real life too. Focus on something strong enough. Oh boy, here we go. I want to do one. Here we go. Okay, I could do one and then you could do one. What falls all day and never gets hurt? A waterfall. Speechless. Absolutely speechless. You said I could do one, so yeah. 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 Some yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah, we got? didn't even get to the. What did the dollar? This is how we roll sometimes. What did the dollar so get for her birthday? How what? do you know if it's a her? What did what? Mm. What did the dollar get for her? Do- birthday? You gotta speak. You're mumbling. What did the dollar get for her birthday? Dollar. Yes, dollar. What did the dollar get for her birthday? A doll uh, house. Double. Speechless. They get better and better. For a joke? They get freaking better and mother flipping better. Every day. All right, let's get back to death. <laughs> death, murder, and destruction. <laughs> Very believable. So okay. you have to you have to understand death and is it bad? Is it sad? Sure, yes. but it's part of freaking life. Not everything dies. There, are, this moon and the sun that's out there. There were it people will under. Die. Mm-hmm. No, but there were people under that same star and moons. Thousands and thousands of years ago, wearing Literally. robes and sandals you- under that same exact sun and same exact moon. And guess what? They died. And then their kids died. And then their kids died. And then their kids died. It's just part of, like, that is life. Like, that's the cycle of life. That's just the way it is. Like, that's why, you know, in all those, like, cartoons, Daddy. they seem, yeah, I'm not in the middle of a sentence or nothing. Okay. Like, Lion King. The father dies, like, right in the beginning, right? Or someone dies in the beginning. They, yeah, they, exactly. those, they do those purposely to teach kids about death. Like, that's why there's... It's kind of fucked up, but they have, like, death in all those movies. Like, it's, yeah, like, he, vicious, right? His brother set him up to get killed by the hyenas or whatever? No, no. He put... he His brother pushed him off a hill into a running herd of buffaloes or something Think like about that. that. Think about how sick and vicious that is. His brother pushed him off a hill into... And it's Lion King, one of the, the greatest kids' movies of all time. And that's what happens in the beginning of it. Because death is part of life. Like, you have to understand that. So, recently, Midge saw a bird... A little tiny baby bird struggling in the middle of the road. It couldn't fly. Nothing. Couldn't fly and you were worried about it, right? So you wanted to do the right thing and help it. So we took it home and it escaped from the house and it flew around the house a few times. Or sort of yeah, like moved and around. And I was in the middle of working out and then she yells, 
Chirpy! I'm like... They named you Chirpy. Yeah. And then I take off my shoes. I run upstairs. And it's in the middle of the hallway. And on the counter. So we had it. And we were going to take care of it for a day or two. And either let it go or take it to the vet. And we had it in the house in a little makeshift cave with plenty of, of space to breathe and stuff. Where it had food. It had whatever water. it needed. Water. And we even put some real grass from the lawn in it. We we it, it escaped from the cage like late at night, and it was raining outside. The rare time it rained, so we didn't want to go let it loose for the first time on on a different street. So we were gonna bring it the next morning to go let it loose where we found it because it looked like it didn't need to go to the vet, like it was ready to go. Even though it was a little baby, we we're gonna bring it right where we found it. Hopefully, it'll find its family or whatever, or maybe just nature will do its thing that yeah. nature does sometimes. Remember that YouTube video where someone, would they let the mouse go yeah, or something? Yeah, they let this little, like, mouse go, and then a hawk just flies in. And the second they let it go, they're like, it's so, you're free, little mousey. They rescued it. It was injured. The second they let it go, a hawk came in and, boom, scooped it up, chomped it up. That's life. Like, that's just nature. And I remember we had a mouse in our house. And, and we let it go in, in, like, in the middle of the street. And we it just came back. Yeah, that was like two houses, or an old, house, old house. There was a yeah, mouse. Yeah, we, we let it go, and then the second we put it down, it started going back to our house. Yeah. From like all the way down the street. It found, yeah, those things are freaking smart. They know where they're getting. They know where the food is at. They ain't no like dummies. Zip. Like he, we, we trained that little soldier. So literally yes. a couple of days after. Can I tell the bird story? Can I keep telling Go ahead. What else we got with the bird? So he was trying to get out of it. In the cardboard box, because, I mean, it was kind of small. We wanted to make it bigger, but it was the only cardboard box we had from deliveries at the time. So, he's try he tried flying, and he was bumping his head, so, you know. And then one day, we went to go check on him. He was laying on the ground, dead. So, then we picked him up, and we were, like, moving him, and we saw his neck moving very floppy. So, he must have broke his neck. So even though you tried and you tried to do the right thing and and you helped it out, so that's what you could do. You tried to help him and it didn't work out for freaking chirpy. But you did what you can. You tried to help him and next time either we will. Are you, Fuck you. What would you do next time? You see a hurt bird? Are you gonna leave it there and let the hawk come in and swoop it away? Are you gonna take it or maybe take it home and just for a little while and. But only bring it to a vet. Good weather. We could bring, bring it to a vet, it. but then we're calling vets even for the hamster, and and it's like vets. Remember, they would wouldn't take it. They they said you had to wait like three four days. I know, but for the when vet. You were, when you were at the project, we found the perfect one. We set everything up, and then we got home. We we were talking to him in the car. We got home. We saw Zip. He was dead. So then we just canceled everything. And the vets to see a hamster will tell you right off the bat, like just to show up $500, right? Even though you think it's already dead. They like say $500 plus whatever else they need to do to it. And we were willing to do that for the hamster because then a couple days later, the hamster, we don't know if it went into hibernation mode. It, it just was, it was just sitting there laying down and these hamsters have a, a little mini mansion with all kinds of tubes and food. And so we don't know what went wrong with the hamster. I think they're just very fragile and the hamster ended up, like how how much sooner or later was the hamster dead? Like a week from the bird, or when it first went to like hibernation, or whatever it went to hibernation pretty much and never came out. No, we had the bird. His in brother like was late biting September. Him. His brother was biting him. Yeah, I no, think... I don't know about that. No, I, I saw know. him. I don't know about that. I saw him because they were they were like just messing around, but that didn't. That's not what put him into hibernation. I mean, even when Zap, what are you doing? Oh my god. So, so then, then we had that. How long was that after? About a month. No, it was l from the no, time was, the time it happened with the bird to the the hamster going like into hibernation yeah. mode was not a month. Okay. That was like he went into hibernation October thirty first Halloween. Went to hibernation on Halloween. Anyway, that was two within a month or less. Two times you had to do with death of a bird you tried to help and felt bad for and you thought you're doing the right thing and helping it and then a hamster okay. what was his name zip and what's the other one's name zap zip and zap you know your back is to the camera that's very they're rude. twins disrespect they're twins twins zip and zap so who's still here zap zap so you need to have these and, and did you was that the first time you ever heard of death or knew what death was or understood no, death definitely before that not. I learned death when I was like two. 
What? What in, what in Grand Theft Auto Five or Call of Duty? No, probably you. we rob stores and then yeah, and in, in, in she yeah. starts fights. She literally beats yeah, up and bodybuilders. G- so we find she each other. We so since we have two TVs, two PS4s, we go on both of them in all in both of the rooms, and we go on like Google Meet or something, and we look at each other so we can talk because we're too lazy to yell across the whole entire house. So we find each other on the map on GTA Online, and then. We're either walking together on the beach, and I start fighting people to get money for it, or we're driving around robbing stores. You wanna, Excellent. You want to hear another Or we're at these rich apartments, and we're buying some, because me and Tyson love to buy these super cool apartments and, and like, these garages and stuff. But And now we live in the same rich apartment building. It's huge. Okay, I'm going to do my story quick for Jin. So, I spent 20 bucks on, like, a million dollars in GTA, and I buy this cool car that I wanted. And then she buys grenades at the gun store. and These two are just sick individuals. And pulls it inside the car. She pulls the pin. The I grenade did, I is did. live. The grenade is live. And she drops it. In the car. Yes, in the car. I guess that has to do with death. Yeah, and then she... That fits the theme of the show. Pulling a pin of a grenade in a car and dropping it. That definitely fits the theme of freaking yeah. death that she we're talking about. Today. I get a car that I spend twenty dollars on it, and then killing spent- me and her. Wait, I wanna, I wanna say and this is not paying attention. Please, please, please. All right, well we need to wrap this up. Okay. We gotta okay, get so, rolling. And then he spent another twenty dollars to buy it again, but he didn't know that he had insurance. She did the exact same thing. She she pulled the pin and dropped it again in the car, and I was like, oh, I have insurance. Or, or, I don't Anyway, this yeah. is you're getting way off track. And yeah, you're losing, you're losing track. us. You're losing us. All right. So the point is, have these freaking conversations with your kids. Talk about what is talk about life. Talk about death. Talk about what is living a good life. How do you live a good life? But also, death. Listen, death is a normal, natural, guaranteed freaking part of life. And you never know when your ticket is gonna get punched. Is the saying. You never know what's gonna happen. Like you don't know. Sometimes people, whatever, you have to be kind of prepared for it. And our great grandma is still alive. How old are your great grandparents? Our great grandpa, our great grandpa is 93. And our no, 94. Grandma, oh, yeah, his birthday. Yeah, our great grandpa is 94, and our great grandma is 91. Wow, I never had anyone, no one on my side ever got lived that old. And also, our great grand, our great great grandma. She already died. Yeah, she lived until ninety-eight. None of my side. Of the, none of my side of the family was like over ninety. Like eighty-eight to the, low, the oldest. And I she remember. was at ninety-eight, still like exercising. She was like and eating exercising. healthy. Like my oldest grandparent on my side was eighty-eight, I think that I can think of that that lived till. But that's part of life. Like, is your grandparents, your great parents, your parents? I'll be dead one day. You never know when. So, what do you think? The the thought is and the moral of the story is the thought of this whole story is that you every everyone everything is going to die no we're ra- we got to wrap this Wait, up but everything but everything or everyone is going to die someday so what do you think that means you should do with your life spend it on wisely and spend it on all the good things you can all the stuff that you wanted to do to make sure you have everything covered and you're ready to die and you're ready to die. That, that's like a stoic. That's what they say. Stoic, stoic philosophy. Like in Marcus Aurelius, there's like they're living to always be ready to die. Like they're ready to die. At, like that's if you live your life so good and so well every fucking day, like you are ready to die. You don't want to die. Obviously, you don't want anyone around you to die, right? But you're you're ready to because it's part of life. Like that death is life. It's so way way it is part of life. So so, so live your right, live your freaking life like a, a fucking savage every day you wake up. Treat every freaking day as if it's your last day. Like, live it a good fucking life. Like, that's what we're talking about. That was your saying. Life is a good life, right? What did you have? What do you like to add in? So, it better be related to what we're saying. So, back to the 98 year old grandma story. So, she would have still been living, but one time she went on a walk, and this is how she died. She tripped, she had a heart attack, and died. No, she tripped in the hospital. No. Sometimes you get stories mixed up or you hear different stories, you have to figure out what the truth is. We'll find out. Okay, I don't know. We'll find out. We'll All right. Anyone have a, a joke to wrap it up and, and me, take me, us me, home? Me, no, me. you have one. You have one too? A different yeah. one? Which? 
What is an astronaut's favorite meal? Well, he already what? said like three jokes. Lunch. Lunch. I don't, I don't get oh it. Oh, my God. Lunch? Anyway, Lunch. before we wrap it up, we got to get rolling because I am, we, we got to go refuel the beast. What do you have to take us home? Got a good one to take us home? Let's see here. What did Cool Yoda say the when he father. said? My God, the main one. That, oh, okay, okay. Your main okay, joke of the okay. day. I'm leaving it for why the end, the, the grand why, finale. Why did, what did the little, why did the little girl put her dad in the freezer? She wanted a popsicle. You, you don't say them clear. We came in here what you're saying, and you don't what pause the, after you say it. She went the popsicle. I don't even know what the hell you just said. What? what is, Was that even English, the, or were you speaking Russian? Why did the little girl put her dad in the freezer? She wanted a popsicle. Can you like? What is this? She, she wanted, wanted a, a I'm popsicle. Le- I'm leaning on the. And that's camera. not our primary. That's our primary. That's our main primary uh, right there. Well, but you're this right is here, like so. the biggest screen. Yeah, so I'm like, and you see yourself. Hey. All right. So like, no hey. excuses. Peace All right, out. we got to get rolling. This has been episode number nine of Breaking the yes. Freaking Cycle. And listen, have these conversations with your kids. Be the fucking role model that your kids need and teach them about these things, about life and death. It's part of life, so they need to know about it so they're not freaking blown off track. I mean, they grow up and they're fucking 35 years old that every little thing that happens in their life is is just a, a catastrophe to them because they live their life wrapped up in a little bubble because you think you're protecting them from things and really all you're doing is doing a disservice because you're not teaching them shit. Fucking teach them. Teach them with how you're acting. Teach them what you're doing and talking and have these damn tough conversations. We got to get rolling and in case no one told you and you and you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses. Why I go roll over there? Anything you two little freak shows want to tell the people. No! Egg! Scout! Scout! Very, very, very normal children. I can't imagine where you get it from. We will talk to you later. No excuses.